Hello again everyone. So this is part two of the lectures that were designed to replace the in-class lecture of the 18th of September of 2012 for Plants and Human Affairs. Okay, so everybody we've learned about the fundamental properties of life, the basic chemicals of life, and we've learned about some really important secondary chemicals that occur in plants. And so now what I want to do is I want to take an even a pretty closer a pretty close look at plants. In other words, where are these chemicals stored? Where can they be found? And in order to to talk about those sorts of things, we have to talk about the plant cell. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from looking at plants like this, like this orange tree. So here are the leaves of an orange tree and here's the fruit of the the tree. To looking much much closer. So for example, this is a magnification of one of these citrus leaves. You can see in this magnification several little clear dots. Now these dots contain essential oils, which is a type of terpenoid compound that you can find in the leaves of citrus. Okay, so these are essential oils that really give the plant that citrusy smell. They're also very bitter in flavor, so if you were to bite into the leaf, it doesn't taste very good or if you were to bite into an orange peel, it doesn't taste very good. And it's because it's full of these essential oils. The inside of the fruit, though, on the other hand, tastes really great. And we, as mammals, are attracted to the tree because of that citrusy flavor. Or, excuse me, the citrusy smell. The flavor in the leaves and the rind are not very attractive, but the sugar in the fruit is really, really attractive to us. So as dispersers, we're sort of attracted to the plant initially by these oils and then by the bright red, bright orange fruits. And then when we break those open, the super sweet flesh of the fruit, which contains the seeds, which the, we then pass on as dispersers someplace else for the plant. Now, if we were to take an even closer look at this leaf, so if we were to take the leaf and we were to cut it right here and look at it with an electron microscope, this is what we would see. So in other words, this vein here that's running up the picture is this central vein in the leaf. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the individual cells that make up this leaf. Okay, so for example, here's a little cell, a little long cell. Okay, here's another little cell. So we're going to take a really, really close look at plant cells. So if you look at this plant cell, here is one whole plant cell, and each of these gray things here are adjacent cells to this central cell. Okay, The outermost part of any plant cell is the cell wall. The one thing that defines plant cells is a cell wall composed of cellulose. The cellulose in this cell wall, and as we learned in class, cellulose is very, very strong. The cellulose in this cell wall is what makes plant cells so rigid and so hard. And it, in essence, it's what allows a plant to stand upright, is this really, really stiff cell wall made of cellulose. The cell wall is so thick that in order for substances to get through it. So if, if we needed substances to move from this cell to this cell, the only way for them to do that is for there to be actual holes in the cell, in the sort of what's called the primary pit field. So it can allow for movement of substances between two cells because otherwise nothing's getting through. As you might imagine, such a structure is great protection not only protection from mechanical damage, but protection from insect damage and other sorts of damage. These cell walls um, also play a role in absorption and transport and secretion of plant substances in, in plants, but their most active role is defense. In other words, most things aren't getting through that cell wall, at least not easily. <clears throat> Everything inside of the cell wall in a plant cell is called the protoplast. And the outermost part of the protoplast is the plasma membrane. Now the plasma membrane consists of, as you can see over here in this diagram, it consists of lipids, 
So here's your lipid bilayer, proteins, and also carbohydrates. And you can bear, you can't, I mean, you really, even with a microscope, it's very, very difficult to see the plasma membrane, but it's a membrane that lies just on the inside of the cell wall. Now, a lot of things can get across the cell wall through these little pits, right? Lots of different substances uh, could potentially do that if it were not for the plasma membrane that lies right there. And that plasma membrane then, and if this is the outside of the cell and this is the inside of the cell, that plasma membrane, the most important function of that plasma membrane is to regulate what comes in and what goes out of a cell. So in other words, a substance may be able to get through these two cell walls, but the next thing that those substances would encounter is a plasma membrane. And the plasma membrane, because of its complex structure using carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids, they can detect what the chemical is, and they can say, okay, you can come in and then allow for uh, protein to transport large substances over the membrane, or what can happen is the protein can look at a chemical compound and say, yeah, no, you're not getting in, either because the cell doesn't need it or because it's harmful to the cell. And so it's kept out of the cellular space. So we have two forms of protection here. We have a cell wall that keeps the plant cell rigid and also protects it from herbivores and mechanical damage. To the inside of that, we have the plasma membrane that truly regulates what chemicals get into and what chemicals go out of any cell. <clears throat> Within the protoplasts, to the interior of the cell of the plasma membrane are organelles. And the first type of organelle I'd like to talk about are plastids. So here you can see some chloroplasts and then there's a plastid down here. Most people are familiar with chloroplasts, which is one, only one, of the three types of plastids found in plant cells. Chloroplasts, of course, um, are the first type of plastid, and it's within these chloroplasts that you contain chlorophyll, gives it the green color, and this is where photosynthesis occurs, that is the production of, of sugars for the plant, and also some oxygen and a little bit of water. The second type of plastid is called a chromoplast. And a chromoplast has another kind of pigment in it. It doesn't have chlorophyll in it, but it has a chemical in it called a carotenoid. And what the carotenoid pigments do is they give uh, an organ a yellow color. So any plant structure you see that has a yellow color, it's because they have organelles within the cells that are called chromoplasts. Now there may be a few chloroplasts, but um, but there would be mostly chromoplasts, and so you would be able to see the bright yellow color contained in the pigment, um, uh, carotenoid pigments. And this, of course, the function is not photosynthesis as it is in, in uh, chloroplasts, although they, carotenoids do play a minor role in photosynthesis. But in the case of this yellow flower, the function is more of a pollinator attractor. And then there's a third type of plastic called a leucoplast. Leucoplasts are colorless, and they're found only in roots, or mostly in roots, and these are storage plastids. In other words, they don't have any pigments, so they have no color, but what they do is they store starch. So for example, if you look at a potato, and you look at the cellular components of a potato, you find cells that are filled with plastids called leucoplasts. So there's not just one type of plastid in plant cells, chloroplasts, there are three types, and they all have somewhat overlapping, but in some cases, very, very different functions. Another very important organelle within the cell of any plant is a mitochondrion. And you know that within mitochondria, this is the powerhouse of the cell. The mitochondria are here, you can see them sort of small, these are chloroplasts. These big ginormous things are chloroplasts. Here's a nucleus. And then here's the mitochondria. And the my mitochondria have a complex me membrane system. And their primary function is to produce energy. So they take the sugar and the oxygen 
that's a byproduct of our that is produced by photosynthesis and then they convert that into energy in the form of ATP chemical energy what's interesting about mitochondria is that not only do they consist of a complex membrane system but they also have their own DNA and I should have said that all plastids also have their own DNA so they aren't just membranes and pigments they actually have their own DNA too which is kind of unique and we'll get back to that in just a moment okay but the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell to produce energy another super important organelle within the cell is the vacuole and you've probably been taught by many many people that a vacuole is the trash can of the cell the vacuole is not the trash can of the cell the vacuole is an important part of the cell that's why it can most of the volume of a cell consists of a, any plant cell consists of a vacuole the vacuole is a storage a humongous storage component for the cell Within these vacuoles are stored really important substances, varieties and different types of substances. Some of them are substances that the plant doesn't need, right? So it sequesters, the, sequesters them in the vacuole. But within these vacuoles are stored really, really important chemicals as well. So for example, if you look at this cell, here's a cell, here's a chloroplast, here's a little mitochondrion, and this is the vacuole. You can't see the, the nucleus here. This is the vacuole, and this vacuole is filled with nicotine, okay, which you know, does, know is a type of alkaloid in plants. And so this cell is full of nicotine as an herbivore defense. So yes, chemicals are things are stored in a vacuole, but often there are things that are the things that are stored there are functionally very important for the plant, in this case herbivore defense. These vacuoles can also contain crystals. As you can see here, there are some long, thin ones, and here are some sort of rosette crystals. And these crystals form, and in some cases also uh, perform a defensive mechanism for the plant, because the, the crystals can be so fine and so dense that if an herbivore eats the leaves containing these cells with these crystals in them stored in the vacuole, the crystals will ir irritate the throat so much that it can actually cause uh, an, an organism's throat to close up. In fact, some, um, some plants are toxic in that way. They contain so many crystals in their vacuoles that, um, that you can't consume them or else you die. You literally, your throat would close up and you couldn't breathe. Okay. So those are some major organelles. Talked about the cell wall, plasma membrane, some major organelles, and we'll continue this in the next set um, in lecture number three.